One of the projects that I'm involved in is in my capacity as the incoming president of the International Union of Immunological Societies. So this is all immunology societies worldwide. We've got 60,000 members. And one of the projects that I want to oversee is a project that supports the training of immunologists from Africa and can be extended to other low and middle income countries. This project is important to me because Africa has a huge burden of disease and yet it's got very few scientists that can understand the biology of the pathogen and come up with interventions like vaccines, like new medicines. But within the society, this presents a solution. We've got 60,000 members all over the world with laboratories who are doing themselves excellent science. And so the project aims to use this massive faculty to support the training of scientists from Africa. And this is called the FIES Legacy Project. We aim to train 1,000 African PhD level scientists over 10 years in immunology, in labs all around the world. With this project, we're aiming to train scientists from each and every country in Africa. So there's 54 countries right now listed in Africa, and we want to train scientists from each of those countries. And in a way, it's planting a seed, um, because when those scientists, some of them are going to mature, and they're going to grow like trees with lots of branches supporting additional scientists. We want to make the immunology community in Africa strong because I think that this is a sustainable way to deal with persistent problems, to deal with new threats like Ebola coming in, where the African scientists that will sequence and figure out where, what the strain is, figure out how they can block transmission, figure out all these sort of interventions that are needed um, and I'm really convinced that the way for the future is to train the people that are affected by the disease. It's like teaching a man to fish rather than giving him fish um, and that's the principle. To answer the question what can Africans do for themselves? I think we're already doing a lot of stuff um, I think there are a lot of capacity building initiatives in Africa. There are um, new centers of excellence where we try to concentrate researchers in one place so that you've got the critical mass of people spurring each other along with the science. Um, and as individuals, we're doing whatever we can. We're running courses, we're taking on new students, we're really trying to to, to be aware of each other um, and to support one another because in the end, Africa's waiting for us. Um, we're the scientists, we should come up. This, that's our, our role to play. So I think there's already a lot going on and what I like also about the present time is the internet. Before, it would take me forever to find out that I, there was a scientist in Congo or there was a scientist in Senegal with whom I share interests. But now with all the social media platforms and with the exchange of information over the internet, I think we're becoming much more cohesive and realizing that there's actually a good number of us trained. And part of the problem is that we just don't know each other. You know, we don't know where we are um, and we're coming together. So I, I'm really quite optimistic. So we find each other through different platforms. Um, sometimes it's conferences that you meet in America, not in Africa. Um, but for example, we have the Federation of African Immunological Societies. So it's the African part of the big international society. Um, and there we have countries, national societies within that. Um, at the moment, there are 17 out of 54 countries that have a national society. And so we're working every year to increase that number. And we have regional conferences, regional courses, just so that we can come together. Um, and we're really keen also on um, connecting with the diaspora. 
There are a lot of scientists who've left Africa in the name of brain drain, um, and they're working all over the world, and we just have no way of finding them and them finding us. So one of the things that the Federation of African Societies is doing is also reaching out because even people that are in the diaspora can be helpful to Africa whilst they're there. They can support students, they can support with resources, all sorts of things. So it's a, a movement that's just growing. So there, there are places where there's really good energy for research, um, and I come from one of them, and that's the Kemri Wellcome Trust Research Program, which is supported by Oxford University here. Um, there's another center in Ghana, um, a West African Center for Cell Biology and Parasitology. Um, there are other centers in Mali at the Malaria Research and Training Center. So there's really a number of initiatives. Um, I've got a very good colleague in the University of Cape Town. So these are nodes, if you like, scattered through the continent. And my dream is that um, this will increase. Um, and the role that I can play is to support the human capacity. You know, I'm not the one who's going to build a university in every country, perhaps. Maybe I'll be lucky and I'll be that person. But from where I am right now, what I can contribute is the human capacity. And I think that human capacity is always a great place to start. Because once you've got people fired up, they can practically do anything. I feel that the, the world is changing. Um, and when I think that people can soon go to the moon on holiday, um, I just think, well, how is it possible that with all the technology around me, I'm not able to make, um, we as a community have not been able to protect a child from getting malaria and have their life cut short. So I, I just feel there's enormous potential for us to make lives better. And I, um, I come from a humble background and I'm only here um, because someone, my parents were able to protect me from disease. Um, so I went, to I went to school, I was bright, I could progress, I could succeed. But for millions in Africa, they'll never get that chance because a mosquito that was infected bit them and then they're slow at school and then they're in a poverty cycle and then they drop out and then they get pregnant and then, you know, it's such a waste. Um, and we can do something about it. So, so that's what drives me. I think we need to give children in Africa a chance. So when I, when I think of the diaspora, I actually found a new term in Germany that I like, and that's brain circulation. Um, rather than think about it as brain drain, um, I find it really much more fulfilling to think about it as brain circulation. And actually, I tell scientists in Africa, you can't do science by sitting in your village in the middle of nowhere. Science is an international affair. You need to get out and get the experience of just being everywhere where scientists are. That movement, that interaction, that spurs new ideas. So I'm not suggesting that scientists in the diaspora should jump on a plane and rush back to Africa. We can all um, contribute to Africa from wherever we are. Let's stay connected and contribute to Africa.